six minutes ovation oh i get these people the expectations of those who expected nothing from this movie were completely mad killer versus client very very original man we've never seen anything like that before let's talk about the main character the most expensive the most professional the most elusive the most heartless and the most self-absorbed killer in the world for 30 minutes in a deadly voice of a dizzy old lady leave nothing for the elves with their tweezers forensic baggies dna kits the main hero explains his life motto don't wear white don't wear tight meaning follow the plan don't improvise constantly shows readiness for anything the film's slogan is execution is everything and at the moment of that very execution he turns out to be unprepared Fuck, fuck, fuck. Fincher is joking, right? The main hero seems himself as a master of these guys, invisibility. I'm just like you, I'm one of you. Despite this, he looks like an exhibitionist on a playground, wearing Johnny Depp's glasses from the movie, fearing Latin in Las Vegas, a kinky Panama hat, and a long coat ready to open up and entertain the crowd like a fleshy magician's cape. I'm gonna fuck you! This guy whose whole appearance screams I'm a maniac, warrior, killer, terrorist, choose your own. With tense cheekbones, proudly towers over short Chinese tourists. He hangs around all day like a shark in front of potential victims, but they just politely turn away. They didn't say anything. The main hero poses in front of the camera lenses, but they shy away from capturing his unremarkable identity. His car waits in front of the next victim's house and no one pays attention to it. Now that's the skill. Chameleons would fall off their palms out of envy. So the plot. He rushes to the hospital where his partner Magdala is admitted. Her brother tells the killer everything. Magdala remembered about the attack to help him figure it out how to find her attackers. He promises him that bad things won't happen again. I promise. I swear to you. Nothing like this will ever be allowed to happen again. I'm really sorry and then it'll never happen again. He finds the taxi the attackers used. Please and warns the driver. After a little thinking and realizing what a loser of a hitman he is, he takes care of that poor young driver just like that. He's, I walk back. To prove himself that he chose this profession for a reason. And heads to New Orleans. He visits his lawyer, Mr. Hodge, who got him into this job. He sneaks into the office, holds Mr. Hodge and his assistant Dolores. But Mr. Hodge won't give up the info about the attackers. He pierced the laptop, deciding to scare Mr. Hodges to death, thereby destroying the data he was looking for. <laughs> Everything I dealt with was on those two laptops. God damn it! Oops. A mistake leads to Mr. Hodge's death, but Dolores says she knows how to find the names he wants. He takes her home and disposes of Mr. Hodge's body. Need any help getting rid of that body? <laughs> Once he gets the names of the attackers and the person who ordered the hit, he kills Dolores. Dolores, Dolores. So he goes to Florida, where one of the attackers, Brute, leaves. Along the way, he gets rid of Mr. Hodge's chopped up body. Brute lives in a nice place with a mean dog. He drags the dog, breaks in, and fights Brute all over the house. Maybe we need to take a break, get some fresh air. After three hour fight, he finally defeats Brood and has to escape before the dog catches him. Outside, he throws a Molotov cocktail to burn down the house. What really surprised the audience was why didn't he take advantage of this opportunity from the very beginning? Who was next on his list? The killer goes to New York to find another person to hurt, a woman they called Expert. He watches her closely and follows her to a restaurant. He sits with her, takes her purse with a gun inside. The Expert realizes she can't escape, so she accepts what's happening and decides to have a drink to calm down. A flight of whiskeys, please. But realizing that the conversation would be very serious. She asks to bring her directly three bottles at once. And my bottle while you're at it. She asks him why he chose to comfort her like this and shares her thoughts on this decision. She tells him she hopes to haunt his final moment since he initiated hers. He walks her to the nearby place, she slips on the ice and asks for help, but he shoots her right in the head. As he walks away, she's shown to have a knife indicating that she was ready to defend herself. Oh. 
Oh man, really. I'm about to stand up right now and give a six minute applause. It's just I have to go to the bathroom. David Fincher is a director who opened the doors to the world of cinema for me. His movies like Seven, The Fight Club, were among the first films I watched when I was old enough to understand them and they greatly influenced my taste. Fincher is one of the directors whose entire filmography I have practically seen. So when his new movie, The Killer, came out, I was expecting to see top-notch thriller with powerful twist, intrigue and constant suspense, something David is known for. However, I was extremely disappointed. Well, thanks a lot for watching. Like if you liked it, subscribe and see you in the next episode.